halftime at the Nokia Sugar Bowl at the Superdome in New Orleans with Florida leading Florida State by a score of 24 to 17. There have been five touchdowns scored here in the first half. More scoring uh, perhaps than some might have anticipated. But Furrier's plan obviously of using the shotgun is worked pretty well I think Steve has forced this game into an offensive game he has forced Florida State to score more points by going to a shotgun it's been very successful he's throwing a lot of quick balls but there's a lot of receivers open in that secondary and there's a lot of people who can play run and catch I'll tell you that here's a sample of some of it and some of the highlights from this first half of play in which the touchdowns were scored I kill your catches the first one that sets Florida up in the first quarter, seven to nothing. This is a pass that Werfel gets away. Sets up this Fred Taylor touchdown. That was a wounded goose, and he got away with it. E.G. Green comes back for Florida State. Make it 17 to 10. This is pretty cute right here, isn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah, that's an artificial turf move right there. So Hilliard has a couple of touchdowns in the first half. Warwick Dunn uh, did the last counter for Florida State with this run. And that gives him some heart. It's got to pick up the whole Seminole team. Bob. Exactly. Got him something. Got him back in the ball game. Warwick Dunn. They got to try and get him into the ball game in the second half. Game. He's their heart and soul. Yep. But it's, it's, it's encouraging for Florida State that Thad Busby has played so well in the first half. Yeah, he's hung in and done very well. But. Florida State is not going to win this football game unless Warwick Dunn starts doing something. They are not going to win a shootout between Busby and Werfel. No. They need to control the ball, get, get Warwick Dunn in the ball game, and they really need to get to Werfel and have their defense, defense create some turnovers and some field position. They have not had the best of the field position in the first half. Looking back over the span of the season now, Florida sat there on top of the heap for such a long time, 10 weeks. They went up to Tallahassee and Florida State beat them by three. Now you get the rematch here. Arizona State fell in the Rose Bowl. All of a sudden, we've got a circumstance here where there's going to be some feeling and some debate as to which team will wind up being your champion. You got to figure since Florida State is number one, and if the Gators could beat them, then they would ascend to the number one spot. Then Steve Spurrier has never won a national championship. So, but going back over the season, it, it's funny how things. You need a little help once in a while to enjoy good fortune. And, There's and, no question about that. And Florida has had some good help lately, to even to get into this game. Texas beat Nebraska yep. in the uh, Big 12 championship game to allow them to get in there. And that was a play of some daring do from John Makovic that uh, startled Nebraska and resulted in the win as much as anything. There were fourth down and one in their own territory. John calls uh, to go, and they come up with this big play, and they went on from there to, uh, to score the touchdown and went on to beat Nebraska. And then Florida wouldn't be in this position. That hadn't happened. Had, had not Arizona State lost yesterday uh, to Ohio State in the Rose Bowl That's because right. they were the number two team. Now, you would think that if Florida wins this ball game, they have every right to say, hey, we're on top. The bowl of the dome covered by youngsters participating in the halftime uh, festival. And here are your halftime stats. Not a lot of rushing in this ball game, passing big time, big numbers for a ball game, but they're only for halftime. Penalties 11 for uh, Florida has been huge. Look at the look at the average starting position. Florida has averaged starting at the 40 yard line. Florida State at their own 21. Gators coming back into the stadium. We've had a, a, a lot of rhetoric go on uh, between November 30 and uh, this game tonight. But I thought one of the best lines of the whole thing came out of Steve Spurrier, whose uh, dad is a minister, Presbyterian minister. And uh, Danny Werfel's uh, dad, John, is a chaplain in the Air Force, uh, stationed at Eglin Air Force Base. And uh, Steve was discussing this late hit business uh, involving Daddy, and he 
he said at the initial news conference over here in New Orleans, he said, Danny is one of those New Testament fellas. He, after he slapped upside the head, he, he said, turns the other cheek and said, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do it. He said, me, I'm an Old Testament guy. You spear me in the head, I'm going to spear you back. <laughs> but, uh, <they're> gonna, <laughs> A lot of Here's things a look. go on. First half uh, numbers, uh, Werfel, uh, 246 yards, uh, two touchdowns. Uh, Taylor didn't do much rushing, and Anthony and Hilliard uh, did most of the receiving. Defense. Get some hands on the body to make sure he puts a bump back in the bump and run, Keith. Yeah, they, could, they haven't done that. You're right. You, you, it became very clear, and particularly when uh, Green has broken loose for two big plays, and... Uh, and uh, I think you're playing with poison, though, when you get up oh, near yeah. those guys. You're right. You're right. They are so quick. Warfel. Anthony has been controlled in the first half. Now, if you can, if you can handle him that well in the second half, you're you're going to have a chance. But he's dynamite. Ike Hilliard, on the other hand, has had a big, big first half. Hilliard scored two touchdowns, and uh, he had four catches for 131 yards. That's a big half. Scott Bentley, number three, the senior from Aurora, Colorado, will kick it off for Florida State. The Gators will have the uh, first possession of the second half. Anthony and Williams are waiting. Riddell Anthony is 15. Elijah Williams is 25. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and here we go with the second half. Two yards deep in the end zone, Anthony. Across the 30 and out to the 32. So the Gators begin with a pretty good field position on their first possession. And they lead in the ball game by a score of 24 to 17. Danny, 13 of 26, 246 yards, two touchdowns. He was sacked twice. And if you're interested, uh, he was... Uh, had one penalty called on the defense for roughing the passer. Let's put it on the 31. It's closer there. Elijah Williams in the backfield. He's got the ball. Tries a sweep. And he's Pollard. Trying to come around the corner by Renard Wilson. He did get something out of it. A couple of yards. It'll be second down. Big country. His father owns a farm. And uh, when he was younger, one of the calves run into the pond and his mother was afraid that he was going to drown. His dad was yelling at him and he was really worried more about Renard strangling the calf than he was about Renard getting out of the, he wasn't worried about Renard getting out. Second down and about seven. Tough place to check off at the line of scrimmage. It's quite noisy. Ball is handed away to Taylor. Taylor's up near the 35 for about a yard. So they'll be looking at third down and about six. Interesting that Florida comes out the first two plays of the second half are running plays. Remember the first game, the third quarter was about nine or 10 or 11 punts by both teams, Keith. Nobody did anything offensively in the third quarter. Connell Spain now comes out at a defensive tackle as they go to third down and six. Gary Spires moves in. Bush steps right up onto the line of scrimmage. And they loop and get Danny Werfel and there's a penalty flag. You got Wilson and Bulware who loop from the outside. They got pretty good pressure up the middle. And they sacked him. Let's see about the flag. Holding, Holding Florida. They'll decline that. It'll bring up fourth down and they'll have to punt it. Pretty good uh, first series for the Florida State defense. Yes, it was. Two runs and a pass by the Gators. And like Lynn was saying, Bobby Bowden said their corners were going to get up and jam them. They did that. And they were covered, well covered. Fifth punt of the night for Robbie Stevenson. Peter Warwick, number nine, is a wide receiver, redshirt freshman from Bradenton. He's standing back on the 35. He's got to back up for that one for the 25. And 
comes back to the 42 with a good return of 17 yards on a 45 yard punt. Starting senior linebacker number 44 for Florida, James Bates is not on the field, not back for the second half. He's in the locker room. He has a concussion. They said they're going to continue to evaluate him. He may come back, but right now he is not even on the field, Keith. Whoa, that's a loss. That's not good news if uh -uh. he's got a concussion. He is the leader, the defensive leader of that uh, Gator defense. Wayne Thomas, number 52, steps in to assume his position at the middle spot. He's a junior from Jacksonville. Busby back, pretty good protection, passes away to the sideline, passes good to Dunn. Warwick Dunn will move it down to about the 45-yard line on the Florida side of the field and make it a first down for the Seminoles. Well now. After the break, they do some adjusting. They come out, they've been awfully good. That first play, Warwick Dunn motions out of the backfield. They get him the ball on the flank, one-on-one. -on -one. And he's a bundle up one on one. Going back to the eye. Back to Dunn. He's right at the line of scrimmage and brought down Lawrence Wright, number four, that strong safety. He's just right up there on the line of scrimmage so much of the time. Yeah, Lawrence Wright, uh, he made 18 tackles in the first game between these two. He won the uh, Thorpe Award, Keith, yep. as I know you know, is the best defensive back in the country. He's very active in the Miami communities, involved with the right track program, which is does a lot for youngsters in that area. Well, Dee Feaster checks in now at the tailback spot, relieving Warwick Dunn. A little sprain, maybe, of the ankle. The pass is thrown hard and a little bit behind. And Here's the penalty call coming up. Wayne Messam was held by Antone Lott, and Lott gets flagged for it. So that's a 15-yard penalty and a first down for Florida State. From behind the defense, nice lane to throw through. Had his left oh, arm yeah, on there. You see number hooked. nine, Lott. He had him hooked. Yeah. The official right behind him, the back judge, is looking right at the wide receiver and the corner on that side. That is the 12th Florida penalty in the ball game. They came into this game with 1,095 yards in penalties. Well, they are averaging 10 penalties a game. They've already have 12 penalties right now, so they're over their allotment. They just play through them. It doesn't matter to them. They just, it's just the way they play. They're used to them. First down, all at the gate of 35. Busby back, gets it off. Got to air under it, mess him down in the corner, out of bounds, incomplete. Little too far. He got away from Lot though, and he made the catch, even though out of bounds. It's just a little bit too high. He just threw it too much air under the ball. If you're going to throw it that high, you got to throw it much sooner. Well, let's find more about Dunn here from Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, he's got a cramp in his leg, and so they're working, him on, working on him on the sideline. Uh, nothing more serious than that, just trying to stretch it out. Keith? Okay. That's good news for uh, Seminole fans. Second down and 10, 24-17. Florida has the lead. We're in the third quarter, 11-49 to play in the quarter. And time here called by Florida State. We'll be right back. Warwick Dunn has returned to the backfield for Florida State. Well, they stretched out the cramp. Yep. Tonight he has uh, nine rushes for 29 yards. First game was much more uh, productive. Second down and 10 from the 35 for the Nose. Downs in motion. And you got flags and whistles. And the penalty is going to be on uh, somebody along the left side of that offensive line for wiggling before the snap. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty and it remains second down. 
ABC Sports coverage of the 1997 Nokia Sugar Bowl brought to you by NASDAQ providing vital investment information to America's individual investors. So put the ball back at the 40 and make it second down and 15 now. Checking off. Gators are coming. Give it to Pooh Bear. And he runs it inside the 35 down to near the 33. Shea Showers was bold and brave enough to go underneath that moving mountain and bring him down. Well, that was a nice check off. The Pooh Bear is 285 and uh, doesn't carry the ball very often. They had little Warwick Dunn blocking for him, and he did a nice job. Showers only weighs 171 pounds. He's that spot remaining. <laughs> you got to give the ball to those big fullbacks every now and then just to keep him happy. On third down, Busby throws it. And it is caught. But it is not a first down. Andre Cooper with a fine catch. I mean, the coverage was there. Cooper made a good play. He came back to get it. Weary was on the coverage and he had to come back. A couple yards short, so they'll go for a field goal. It'll be a 45 yard try by Scott Bentley. He's one for one tonight. He hit from 43 yards. This one is on its way. Plenty of leg. And it's good. And so the Seminoles make it a 24 20 ball game. The Nokia Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Nokia, proud sponsor of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Nokia, connecting people. And the Ford F-150, strength after strength after strength. Scott Bentley ready to kick it off for Florida State. As the Seminoles pull within four, it's a 24-20 ball game. Ike Hilliard and Elijah Williams are deep for the Florida Gators. These are two very talented football teams, but the thing I like about both of them is they got grit, boy, they won't quit. They keep clawing and scratching. That's a yard deep in the end zone by Hilliard. Pretty good lick laid on Mr. Hilliard up at the 22-yard line. There, the Gators will go to work. Two Heisman Trophy winners right there talking. There's a look at what Werfel has done tonight. We've had 29 pass plays. He's been hit on about half of them and knocked down 13 times, three sacks. And most of those pass plays have been from the shotgun formation. Well, he didn't get that two extra yards, did he? They put it right on the 20. And Danny starts out of the shotgun. And here comes Messrs. Boulware and Wilson, and they flush him. Now he throws, and it is just over the head of Ike Hilliard. Ike being covered by James, no, by Byron Capers. That was just good coverage downfield. Capers and the rest. Werfel was scrambling around, buying some time, giving all of his receivers a little more time to get open, and nobody did. That's four plays for Spurrier in the second half, and really nothing is. Uh, he had two running plays on the first possession, and then a pass, and now the first play is a pass here. He needs to get something going. Look out for the blitz here. Look at Smith creeping up. Now he drops off, passes away, and thrown over the head. The intended receiver, Nathan Kareem. It's a nice fake. They faked Danny out. The safeties were itching up like they were going to come. Thought he had to get rid of the ball quickly. There's, a, there's the winner right there. There's a look from the shotgun. A new award this year, the 
Frank Broyles Award goes to the top assistant coach of the year, and Mickey Andrews won that, Keith, and very deservedly, as you know. Great award. Assistant coaches have been overlooked too long. Yep. Werfel back. Passes away. It is caught by Riddell Anthony, but he is short of the first down. James Cozy took a shot at the interception. Didn't quite get it. It's going to be fourth and short, and Spurrier's over there thinking about it. He can't Anthony. be thinking about it. You can't go for it on fourth down inside your 30 yard line, can you? <laughs> He's done it before. <laughs> Done it before, but you know, he just hates to give the ball up. He's only had the ball six plays. He's had it two possessions. He's been three and out both times. Second half. Robbie Stevenson's sixth punt. Having a good night. Oh, that's maybe his best one. Oh, it runs all the way back inside the five. Rolling dead. Look at this. Oh, holy smoke. Great kick. Mm -hmm. Deep Feaster pulled his hands away from it, didn't touch it, and the ball rolled all the way back to the two-yard line, and it's a 68-yard punt. Monday night on ABC, Torn Look guests on a brand new episode of Dangerous Minds, starring Annie Potts, then Harry Hamlin in his most surprising role. Michelle Green stars in the world premiere of Badge of Betrayal. On the Monday night movie on ABC. So the Seminoles continue their poor field position. They've been in this fix a lot tonight. Exactly right, Keith. And you got to be careful down here. The Gators have six defensive touchdowns on the year. Look out! Look out. Ball's thrown away. I mean, he was just walloped by Johnny Rutledge back in the ball game and you got a Seminole shaken up right on the goal line. There's a look at Rutledge 58. Just comes through un untouched. The referee is looking at the uh, the fish at the uh, at the quarterback. Yeah, he wants to get the ball to done. That's where he was going with it. I think Dunn is the man that's on down on the field. Yeah, it is Warwick Dunn who is down on the field. So uh, they may be going back to that cramp the it way they're like, working on yeah. it. It looks like it. Once you get a cramp started and remember you're in the Superdome so you're it's quite warm. And uh, once you get a cramp going it's hard to get that thing out of it. You see the right come over and slap him on the rump because yep. everybody respects that kid. Not only as a football player, but yeah. as a person. But those two guys, those two kids are good guys too. Dunn and Wright. They've been going at this for four years. And uh, Feaster is in the ball game now, Keith. Normally, Rock Preston would be in, as you mentioned earlier. Preston academically ineligible. But when you don't have Warwick Dunn on your, in your backfield, you, you, you're going without a wheel. You're missing something. There are no questions. Busby gets it away, throwing it deep down the sidelines, and it is incomplete. Almost <laughs> intercepted by Anton Locke. And I really think Locke would have intercepted it if, if he hadn't been hit by his own man. Laverne Coles, and he didn't, uh, he, he may have speed, but he he had, a lot was running right with him. Yeah, but watch this at the very end. Watch the uh, right from the right side of the screen is going to come in and knock the ball loose. Right here. And lot number nine gets up and starts yelling at him. <laughs> yeah, well. Right, right's going to get up and says, if you hadn't knocked it loose, I could have caught it. <laughs> Gets up and starts yelling at him. <laughs> Those defensive backs don't get a chance to get many of them. Well, they try to run it with Feaster, and they get it out to the five, and now they turn it over to Sean Liss and the kicking team guys and say, bail us out again, will you? It is their sixth punt, and Liss has been over 40 all night. Let's go back to that last play. 
Now watch a lot, number nine. He thought he got a chance at interception. <laughs> Why'd you come over? I had that ball. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Got to be careful. Steps back out of the end zone and it'll cost him two. Didn't get all of it, but it's a tail dragger. If they let it hit the ground, it'll take off. Jacquez Green fields it at midfield. And look out! Inside the 25. Lifts the putter. Made the tackle. No question that the special teams for the Gators have stepped up big here tonight. Great field position all day long for Florida. He does a smart thing here, stopping the ball from rolling. Now he gets all the way over to the sideline where he's got a little help, some white jerseys. Great field position. Fred Taylor is the running back. He's got the ball. He's inside the 10. And a penalty flag. And another one.